Thanks for purchasing your new wing bike. This video will give you the basic knowledge to build your bike and ensure a safe riding experience. However, we highly recommend you take your bike to a bike shop for it to be professionally assembled. Be sure to consult the online assembly and owner's manuals before assembly and operation of your bike. Open the box and carefully lift the bike out using the frame or wheel. Do not lift from the wires or cables. Keep an eye out for the two small accessories boxes. Lean the bike against the wall so it doesn't fall over and remove all the zip ties and packaging. Once all the packaging is removed, the bike is ready to assemble. If you don't have a bike stand, you can use the box to act as a support during assembly. Open the accessories boxes and check you have everything you need. Toolkit, pedals, lights and light bolts, fender bolts, stem extender and spacers, and the charger. Locate the keys on the handlebars so that you can remove the battery if installed. If the battery is not already installed on the frame, it will be in a separate box inside the bike box. Plug the charger into the battery to charge while you finish assembling your bike. The light on the charger will be red while charging and will turn green once the battery is fully charged. Take the seat post and apply a light coating of grease to the lower end as well as inside the seat tube. Insert the seat post into the frame and tighten the seat post clamp with a 4mm Allen wrench. To install the handlebars, remove the four 4mm Allen bolts from the stem faceplate. If you have a Freedom X, these bolts are found on the underside of the stem. Ensure the handlebar wires and cables are not twisted and put the handlebars in place in the stem ensuring the horizontal grooves are centered in the stem clamp and the brake levers are roughly level with the ground. Replace the stem faceplate and tighten the four 4mm Allen bolts evenly in a cross pattern. On the Freedom X, make sure the two shorter bolts are at the front and the two longer bolts are at the back. Look at the ends of the pedals and identify the left and right pedal. You will see a small L stamped in the end of the left pedal and a small R on the right pedal. Apply some grease to the pedal threads. Install the right side pedal by spinning the axle clockwise. Install the left pedal by spinning the axle counterclockwise. Tighten both pedals with a 15mm wrench. Remember, tighten the right pedal by turning the wrench clockwise and the left pedal by turning the wrench counterclockwise. To install the front wheel, loosen the axle nuts without removing them. Lower the front fork onto the wheel axle, making sure the washers are on the outside and the disc rotor is aligned in the brake caliper. Make sure the axle is fully seated in the fork dropouts and fully tighten the nuts with a 15mm wrench. To install the front and rear lights, remove the tape protecting the cables in either end of the top tube and locate the light cables. If you purchased the optional throttle, you will want to install it before installing the front light. Plug the lights into the cables and gently press the lights into the frame with the screw holes facing down. Be careful to tuck the cables out of the way inside the tube. Then install the light mounting bolts and washers and tighten with a 4mm Allen wrench. For the Freedom Fatty and Freedom S, install the light mounting screws and washers and tighten with a standard crosshead screwdriver. If you purchase the optional fenders, now is the time to install them. The rear fender comes partially installed. Use two of the 4mm Allen bolts to secure the fender bars to the mount points on either side of the rear wheel. Secure the top mount with a 4mm bolt. Align the fender with the wheel and tighten all three Allen bolts. Remove the front fender from its wrapping and slide over the top of the front wheel. Secure the top mount with a 5mm Allen bolt in front of the fork. Use two 4mm Allen bolts to secure the fender bars to the mount points on either side of the front wheel. Align the fender with the wheel and tighten all three Allen bolts. The tires on the Freedom 2, Freedom X and Freedom S should be inflated to between 40 and 65 PSI. We recommend 60 PSI. The tires on the Freedom Fatty should be inflated to between 5 and 25 PSI. We recommend 20 PSI. If the disc brakes are rubbing, loosen the two 5mm bolts on the caliper. 
Now you'll be able to move the caliper from side to side to align it with the rotor. Look along the rotor from the front and the back and make sure there is an equal gap between the pads and rotor on both sides. Once aligned, tighten down the two 5mm bolts. If the brakes don't feel tight enough at the levers, loosen the single 5mm bolt on the caliper cable clamp. Pull the cable through the clamp and hold while sliding the arm up until the pads are close to but not touching the rotor. Tighten the 5mm clamp bolt while holding the lever in position. Test to see that the wheel spins freely and the pads are not rubbing on the rotor. Adjust as necessary until the desired lever feel is found and the brakes are not rubbing. Minor adjustments to the cable tension can be made using the barrel adjusters on the caliper and lever. Turn counterclockwise to tighten and clockwise to loosen the cable. If you have chosen the optional throttle, remove the front light if you have installed it already. Locate the cable with the yellow plug inside the front light tube and feed the cable out the left side. If the cable is not visible, gently remove the alarm box to access it. If already installed, remove the left grip. Loosen the retaining clamps on the left brake lever, horn and display. Slide these along the bar to make room for the throttle. Slide the throttle onto the bar, followed by the throttle spacer. Slide the left grip back onto the handlebar. Align the left brake lever with the right brake lever and tighten the clamp. Rotate the throttle so that it seats neatly up against the brake lever, then reposition the display and horn and tighten the retaining clamps. Connect the throttle cable to the yellow connector and secure with cable ties. Reinstall the alarm box, making sure the speaker is facing down. Then reinstall the front light. Each wing bike, with the exception of the fatty, comes with a stem extender that can be used to raise the handlebars another 3 inches if desired. To install the stem extender, the stem must be removed. Loosen the two stem clamp bolts using a 5mm Allen wrench. Then loosen and remove the top stem bolt using a 4mm Allen wrench and slide the stem off the steering tube. On the Freedom X, this bolt is under the display. To access it, remove the small screw under the stem using a small crosshead screwdriver and push up on the wires to pop the display out of its housing. Remove the top stem bolt and slide the stem off the steering tube. Slide the stem extender onto the steering tube followed by the three wide and one thin spacer, and then the stem and handlebars. If installing the extender on the Freedom X, only the three wide spacers are used. Install the long stem bolt supplied in your accessories box and lightly tighten. This only needs to be tight enough so that there is no play in the headset. If it's too tight, then the steering will be too stiff. Align the handlebars with the front wheel and tighten the two clamp bolts on the stem extender, followed by the two stem clamp bolts. Check for play in the headset by holding the front brake and moving the bike back and forward. If there is any play, loosen all four clamp bolts, tighten the stem bolts some more, and re-tighten all the clamp bolts. Reinstall the Freedom X's display and secure with the small screw. Before riding the bike, you'll want to make some final adjustments to the handlebars. Stand over the bike and check that the bars are in line with the front wheel, then tighten the two stem bolts evenly using a 4mm Allen wrench. If you installed the optional stem extender, tighten the two bolts on it first. Before installing the battery, make sure to check the silver ring holding the battery terminal and the small silver screw holding the silver locking tab. Make sure both of these are tightened down fully. To install the battery, slide the top end into the frame, then press down on the bottom end until it clicks into place. Make sure that the battery is fully seated and check that it can't be removed without using the key. On the Freedom 2, S2 and Fatty 2, hold the middle button to power on the bike. From here, you can see your battery level, speed and pedal assist level, as well as the bike's mileage. You can scroll between total mileage, trip mileage, and current power output by pressing the middle button. To adjust the pedal assist level, simply press the up or down buttons. The pedal assist can be set from 0 to 5, where 0 is no pedal assist, 
and 5 is maximum assist. To turn on the lights, hold the up button. The lights will turn on and you will see an icon in the display. To turn them off, hold the up button again or simply turn off the bike by holding the power button down. On the Freedom X, hold the bottom mode button to power on the bike. The rest of the controls are operated in the same way using the up and down arrows. To activate the inbuilt alarm system, press the top button on your remote. The alarm will sound a warning if the bike is disturbed. If disturbed again, the alarm will sound continuously for several seconds. To deactivate or silence the alarm, press the bottom button. Now, go for a ride! If, after riding your new bike, you find that the gears do not shift smoothly, minor adjustments can be made using the adjuster on the derailleur. If the gears won't shift up smoothly, turn the adjuster clockwise a couple of notches. If they won't shift down smoothly, turn the adjuster counterclockwise a couple of notches. Only make adjustments in small increments. Wing bikes are designed to help you outsmart traffic and get you effortlessly from A to B. We know you'll enjoy your new wing bike.